Hey loves, my name is Amber, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to be discussing Slug and Other Stories by Megan Milks. While this video is not monetarily sponsored in any way, I would like to say a huge thank you to Milks and Feminist Press for sending me this copy to review. Before we get too far into the review, I did want to mention a few content warnings, just in case they happen to be bothersome to anybody. Some of the content are things that are depicted actively in the stories, whereas some are just simply mentioned in passing. The book is very sexual, including some rougher kinks and elements of BDSM. There's fat phobia, transphobia, homophobia, assault, gun and weapon use, frog dissection, death, bestiality, rape, abortion, and spit play, which normally I wouldn't think anything of, except apparently I've discovered that I have like an anti-spit play kink. Like, if you can have an anti-kink, I have it. Because I've never once, like, I had never given thought to the topic. It wasn't anything that ever interested me, but I like didn't care because like, we don't kink shame around here. I don't give a fuck. But after reading one of these stories, the thought or the mention of it literally makes me want to gag. So thank you, Milks, for this new revelation of mine. <laughs> With all of that being said, we do get a bit of representation, though, for different kinks, as well as some trans and queer characters. The book is very surrealist and metaphorical, and quite frankly, a fucking trip. Like, if you guys saw my review for Margaret and the Mystery of the Missing Body, you would know that Milks definitely has a bit of a surrealist writing style, but Slug takes that times, like, 10. 20, 100, like it ramps it up so high. Um, not in a bad way, it's just so different from anything else that I've ever read. And I don't know if this is just something that's like very unique to Milks's writing themselves, or if this is just a whole genre of like book that I haven't ever come across before. But I am both fascinated, mesmerized, and disgusted <laughs> at the same time. I feel like the synopsis of the book really does a good job at giving you an idea of like how it goes. A woman metamorphoses into a giant slug. Another quite literally eats her heart out. A wasp falls in love with an orchid and hair starts sprouting from the walls. These stories slip and slide between mediums. From video games to fan fiction, body horror to choose your own adventure, as characters cycle through giddying changes in gender, physiology, species, and identity. Finally, back in print, Slug and Other Stories is a revised edition of the author's debut collection and a testament to the messy anti-logic of queer feelings by a revelatory new voice. So I feel like that gives you a bit of a nice idea as to the exact nature of the book and just how quite unique of a narrative it is. And the book itself, it's not told as like, it's not one giant story. Like it's not a novel. It is a collection of short stories. Um, so I'll actually go ahead and give you a little bit of a brief synopsis of each story itself. Slug follows Patty, who's into kinky S&M, among other things, through some of her fantasies, with her literal climax of a sex session with a giant slug before transforming into a giant slug herself. The Strands follows Tegan, whose apartment is being overrun by hair after their breakup with girlfriend Sarah, who wasn't supportive of Tegan's wishes to experiment with testosterone. Kill Marguerite follows 12-year-old Katie through her middle school experience on a video game-esque mission to kill Marguerite, local bully who just moved to town. In My Father and I Were Bent Groundward, a father and offspring each had a leg chopped off by the god Hephaestus, and from the wounds birthed immortal children who would become lovers. In Tomato Heart, a couple meet and bond over a mutual love of tomatoes, until the man proposes the woman to commit to each other, which effectively causes the woman's heart to burst from her chest, only for it to be a tomato, of which she has a hankering for. Twins is a choose-your-own-adventure story that follows a pair of twins, one of which discovers that one of their middle school teachers is actually an alien. In Wild Animals, a girl rents an erotic film by some obscure filmmaker to watch with her partner that excites her but disturbs them. In Germ Camp, a sister visits her younger brother, who was born with his organs outside of his body. They engage in an exercise of visualization. Trauma Rama is a collaborative effort of those recalling their memories of the Seventeen magazine column Trauma Rama, as well as their own Trauma Rama worthy stories. Earl and Ed follows an orchid and a wasp who develop a relationship and wish to be exclusive with each other, despite the scorn they would get from the insect and flower communities. 
AB 469, A Porniography in Three Parts, is a pony-centric piece that was written in response to a remark made by State Representative Jesse Kramer during the 2015 public hearing on proposed trans-discriminatory bathroom legislation. Dionysus depicts a dysfunctional relationship between alcoholic god Dionysus and her presumed mortal partner. In Take Us to Your LDR, an alien species observes a trans individual to collect data, but becomes more invested in Fred than they are supposed to. With Swamp Cycle, honestly, I have no idea how to even broach trying to explain this one, and quite frankly, I don't want to. It's so gross. <laughs> Patrick Gets Inspired is a meta combination of an erotic story intermixed with thoughts directly from the author about the challenge of writing said story, as well as the story slug. So like I said, trippy ass fucking book. As you can tell, that was a lot. And those are just some very, very like basic bare minimum explanations of the gist of the story. But of course, I didn't really go into the metaphorical aspects and the you know, literary messages that they were trying to convey. Overall, the book explores themes like sexuality, gender, adolescence, resentment, transformation, incompatibility, anxiety, consent, as well as romantic, sexual, and familial relationships. My personal favorites of the collection include The Strands, Twins, Earl and Ed, and Take Us to Your LDR. I definitely had you know, an affinity towards those ones versus some of the others. Not to say that the others were good versus bad or anything, I just had my particular favorites of the bunch that I had the most relatability and understanding of. I think that there are some really good examples of representation and metaphor, but there were also a lot of instances where I felt like I personally just didn't get necessarily what Milks was trying to go for, or I just didn't relate enough to really fully comprehend the points that were being made. And quite frankly, there were a few times where I was just a little bit too taken aback by some of the content to be able to fully like look at it from a literary point of view. But there were also a lot of instances where I really did get what they were trying to say and very much related to it and found comfort in the fact that other people are also bringing this up and expressing these kinds of feelings and emotions. I did think that it was really, really lovely throughout the book to be able to see different representations of queer and trans folk, but without it being like a thing, you know, like these were just a variety of different people existing as they are in so many different, you know, varieties of gender and sexuality spectrum. And it was just really lovely to see queer people existing as queer people, because I feel like we don't often get that. Like, I do try and prioritize different representations, especially ones that I do share relatability with, but quite frankly, I find it hard to find queer stories that aren't just queer stories, you know? Like, sometimes it's nice to be able to see queer representation that, like, that's not what the book revolves around or the, uh, whatever the media is, you know? Like, if we get queer characters, it's because they're queer, not just because they're queer, you know? Like, and like, it feels weird to say that, knowing that the book, like, does very heavily lean into the themes of transformation and queerness existing, and like, a lot of the stories are about people being queer, but like, I don't, it doesn't feel objectified, I think is what I'm trying to go for. Like, we get it, and like, we get the representation, and we even get the stories that are about queerness, but it doesn't feel like it's to be about queerness, it just feels like it's coming from a queer person who's expressing themselves or the experiences of others that they know. I don't know, I just, I really liked the queer composition of the book, as weird as so many of the stories were. Like, there were definitely a few points where I was made a little bit uncomfortable, not because of, like, queer reasons, just because of, like, the depictions of the book in, like, different ways. Uh, there were definitely different aspects that I was a bit uncomfortable with and, you know, a little bit grossed out by. But 
not in like a damaging way. It was just like my own personal preferences. And I think it's a lot of the aspects of the body horror. Um, for as much as is like a huge horror fan I am, I'm not the biggest fan of body horror type stuff. And the book definitely does have a lot of depictions of body horror-esque things and transformations and instances. And I think that was a little bit of my hesitation. I was just like, hmm, not my favorite. As well as some of the sexuality that's featured in a literal sense of like having sex and kinks and things like that. Which again, not an issue at all, just not necessarily my personal cup of tea and what exactly was represented. So it was a little bit just like, hmm, all right. Like it was very fascinating to see the perspective of presumably other people who are into that kind of thing, but just not my cup of tea. So it was kind of just like, huh, interesting. <laughs> like, you know how sometimes you'll just come across like pornographic type stuff and it's for stuff that you're like super not into. So it's kind of just like, huh, that really do be some people's interest. <laughs> um, this is what a lot of the different sexual elements of the book felt like for me personally, but like for some of you guys that may be exactly what you're into and you may be thrilled to see that representation. Um, so for that aspect I do think that it's fantastic to be included. I did just find it to be an interesting collection to house together. Like there are definitely a lot of short story of the short stories that I would like to read again and will probably continue to read over and over, but some of them quite frankly I don't think I will probably ever turn the page to. So I feel like it's there's not any particular one central theme or topic that's discussed. Like we do get a general kind of vibe, but there are so many different depictions of that vibe that it feels a little less curated than some other short story collections that I've seen. Not in a bad way, just noting things. You know how it goes. But just truly such a wild ride of a read. Like, I definitely already kind of want to reread it simply because it's been a hot second since I have and my brain's just like, that can't have been what you read. And I'm like, it is, but you know. Uh, so I already kind of want to read it again and I definitely want to hear other people's thoughts on the book. So if any of you guys have read any of the short stories within the book, please start a conversation with me down below because I would love to have conversations about it and see what other people think about certain aspects. But anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I had a blast hanging out with y'all. Peace.